With Leon Edwards defending his belt in the trilogy fight against Usman, top contender Bilal Mohamed is ready and waiting for his shot at the title, but there's one thing standing in his way. On the Anakin Florian podcast, Bilal says he's not only disappointed with the UFC, but is also confused as to why Covington is being offered the fight rather than a grudge match with Masvidal that already has a legitimate backstory ready for the promos. Like you said, even if you're not a fan, you ha you have to respect the work I put in, the stuff that I, what I've gone through. I've gone. I'm on an eight fight winning streak. Uh, I'm literally. I won twelve of my last thirteen fights, and and it's it's not like I'm beating nobody's. I'm beating ranked guys. I have more ranked wins than the champion. I have more ranked wins than the former champion that wasn't at rematches. I have more ranked wins than all these guys, and I have the the fourth longest winning streak in history of the welterweight division. And I'm not being mentioned in the, the title contention. When Dana comes out and says Kobe's next for sure, it just doesn't make any sense. And it just like, it was always the, oh, we don't make fights after the fight. We don't make, we don't do that after the fight. But where the hell did Kobe come from to jump the line in front of everybody when his last win was Masvidal, who's number, if we're talking about rankings, he's number 12. If we're talking about wins, he's lost two in a row. And he got knocked out before that fight with against Usman, and Kobe still didn't finish him in that fight. And Kobe, Kobe almost got finished in that fight by Masvidal. So, like, how does he just jump the line in front? Like, if it was Masvidal getting inside a fight, I would understand. If it was even like, we'll wait and see what happens with Masvidal, because I understand the storyline there. I understand the the business aspect of it and the three piece of the soda and why I would get skipped. And that's what I was. That's what I was more nervous about any than anything is if. Leon wins, they're gonna wait and see what happens with the Masvidal fight. And I could understand that, but then that would also give me the Kobe fight, which I've always wanted anyway. And to me, it makes sense anyway. That's I'll take that fight, because just to punch him in his mouth. And because he be, he's been running from us for so long, he didn't want to fight me in uh, Mar in London when we were asking for that fight. And it was like, Dana could say this, oh, we, you know, we were trying to make these fights for Kobe and they just fell through. It's not falling through on my end. We didn't ask for more money. We didn't ask, for a, a higher rank, a higher paycheck. I'm not I'm not a Costa. I'm saying, let me fight the motherfucker for free. Right. Let me fight it for what I'm getting paid right now. There's no negotiations in my end, and you guys are just saying no. So it just tells me that there's something bigger than this. UFC doesn't want to look bad. They want Kobe to uh, drop the charges on Masvidal because they're two of the biggest names in the company. And if they are negotiating with ESPN or whatever about uh, the new TV deals, like you don't want a, a trial case going on with your guys where the, the company looks like barbaric and stupid because you have two morons fighting each other outside of the cage when they just fall inside of the cage. But then these two morons are the ones that are getting the most shine. So it's like, what do you want? If you want to be a professional company, if you want to be like, show the fans that we're a real sport uh, company, it's like the guy that's winning, the guy that's uh, fighting, the guy that's putting it all on the line every day. And these young fighters that are coming up, it's like, now what do they think? It's like, uh, so do we have to change the way we act? Do we have to change the way we do this? Do we have to change the way we do that? Because winning is not enough. And even a fan base, I think I still have a big enough fan base where I will be selling pay-per-views. I will be pushing a fight, selling a the fight. There's not a lot oh, of fighters no. that, don't, don't even, that barely talk. I'm, I'm on social media. I have I have people that are behind me 100%. I have a country behind me. You saw me fight in Abu Dhabi. You saw the crowd over their reaction. And it's like, it really doesn't make any sense. And Bilal also reveals that he was down to fight Colby on the Edwards vs. Usman London card, where Covington even weighed in as a backup fighter and could have easily booked to fight Bilal with the backup fighter stipulation remaining intact. Yeah, I mean, my la after my last fight, when I got the Sean Brady fight, that's when I was like, am I being punished? Because I, I just beat number four uh, in Wonderboy, and then I beat number five in Luke, and there was four guys above me that were with no fights. And I was like, why am I going to fight a Sean Brady? It makes no sense for me to fight downward. But then they gave me that fight and they forced that fight. So then I, that's what that's what I was like, man, dude, maybe they got something against me. But then I go out there and I finish him in Abu Dhabi. And it's a, it's a, I was still an underdog on that fight card. And one of the biggest cards of the year in Abu Dhabi, the crowd was going nuts. And to get a finish like that, you're expecting something bigger to happen for you. You're expecting to, to hop right back on the train and keep the ball moving. But then it was the the waiting game, and it's like, what are we getting? Oh, well, you know, we'll see what happens next. And then it was like, Gilbert just won his fights. And I was like, okay, well, I guess since no, nothing else is happening, we're going to fight Gilbert. And it's like, no, 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 Gilbert's fighting Masvidal. You're going to fight Kobe. So then I'm like, all right, well, I'm fighting Kobe. So that's a fight I always wanted. I'll take that fight. Let's do it on the March card. Let's do it in London. 
on the same card as Usman and, uh, and, and Leon because it makes the most sense. And if somebody does have to get pulled off the card, you have two welterweights on there that are willing to step in and weigh in, which I weighed in multiple times at under 170 anyway. So the fact that uh, they didn't make that happen, that's when I was like, none of this really makes any sense at all. Like it doesn't, from a business point, it doesn't really make sense. From a, a fighter point, it doesn't make any sense. So I'm like, I'm just wondering. Daniel Cormier has also defended Bilal in saying he is the rightful next opponent. But unfortunately for Bilal, Dana White has a different opinion. Daniel Cormier said that Bilal Muhammad is the most warranted for a welterweight title shot. Um, I just wanted to know what your thoughts on that was and uh, why Bilal is not getting a next title shot. Well, Daniel Cormier doesn't make those decisions. Uh, it's nice of him, but uh, yeah, uh, Bilal, uh, we have plans for Bilal. Bilal's going to fight again soon, and then we'll find out who's next in line. In other news, former champion Cody Garbrandt spoke to MMA Junkie and revealed he's been offered a rematch with Dominic Cruz, who he beat over five rounds in style to win his title back in 2016. He believes Cruz would want the rematch because of the way he got beat. Here's what he said. It was a great night for me to fight such a masterclass performance against one of the greatest bantamweights to ever do it. He's still out here plugging along and doing his thing. It's funny, Ali hit me up the other day and was like, hey, would you like to do a Dominic Cruz rematch in July? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I have nothing against Dominic and I have a lot of respect for him. I have a lot of respect for him and understanding of him. We've had a lot of conversation, we've run into each other at the PI, and we've been doing PT on tables right beside each other. I mean, that night was just my night, and I feel like any night against Dominic Cruz will be my night. He's smart, he's a great analyst, he's a great fighter, he's gonna be in the Hall of Fame. Who knows what's happening, what will happen down the road. I mean, if someone beat my ass like that, I'd want to try to, you know, get that back, for sure. And Sean Strickland is currently without a dance partner and goes to Instagram to vent his frustration and explain why a fight with Paulo Costa is not in the cards. They want him to fight fucking Shemayev, right? And again, you have these nerds, you have these number crunchers, they're online, they're looking at the analytics. And that is the fight that makes the UFC the most money. Again, I'm not fucking hating on the UFC because if the UFC makes money, I make money, you know what I'm saying? So you're like, well, that fight's so far out, Costa wants to fight you earlier, why won't that happen? And now the UFC's thinking, man, well, what would Sean beats Costa? And if you look at the way he fought Luke Rockhold, like, it's a it's a good, you know, it's a good possibility that I'd beat, I'd beat Costa. So now him going to the Jemaya fight, there's a lot less hype going into that. So it just, it undersells the fight. It doesn't bring the UFC money. And I, and again, I support that, man. I'm with the UFC. It makes fucking sense to me. So I have a choice. The UFC's gonna say, hey, Sean, we're gonna ice you for like eight to 10 months till somebody opens up, till injuries heal. Or you can go fight a few lower ranked guys. And again, most guys in my position say, fuck that. I just made a bunch of money. I wanna fucking wait eight to 10 months to fight a high ranked guy and save my ranking, right? Because again, if you're in the top 15, you're a bad motherfucker. And if you lose to a 14 ranked guy, which a 14 ranked guy could beat a top, 50, a top 10 guy, top five guy any day of the week, then you're the guy that lost to the fucking the low ranked guy. It's bullshit. I know, but that's just how the fucking that's how the thought process is. So I'm gonna have a choice: either wait eight to ten months to fight, wait for somebody higher rank opens up, or man the fuck up and fight a bunch of guys that are lower rank and take the risk. Then day, you guys, I want to fucking fight. I want to fucking make money. Rankings mean nothing, dude. Top fifteen, you guys are all bad motherfuckers. So more than likely, I'm gonna be fucking you know doing the lower circuit fucking. I'm be fighting a lot of lower guys, but in the day, I don't give a fuck. And shortly after, Strickland went back to Instagram to call out some light heavyweight fighters, since he can't get one at middleweight. I just talked to the UFC, and they pretty much said I'm fucked. I'm out of luck. So some 205ers out there, Dominic Reyes. I don't know I, anybody out there that wants a piece. Maybe, maybe we handle this shit at 205 because that division's open for some fights. And former champion Max Holloway shares some highlights from his training camp, preparing for his five-round main event against Arnold Allen. We ain't even scared of the monsters in our cars that's made up. We ain't had an out tonight. Yeah. I got your young eyes light up the uh, night sky. Yeah. Because if we're famous, because yeah. the stars already know what our name is. Uh, and the start into a line, we'll be lighting up the night. 
right nobody gonna tame us no fear we ain't scared of danger so give it your best try can nobody stop us this time so i'ma let my chest poke out just a little i'm headed to the top can't stop in the middle we are on the rise so keep watching the sky 